Hey guys, welcome back. So today I want to make a quick video and show you guys a new rifle that I will be using this fall to do some coyote hunting. The rifle I plan on using is this BCM SBR. We ordered several of these in to Copper Custom. I wanted to keep one for myself to use for coyote hunting. If you follow the channel, you'll know that all my other 300 blackouts are 16 inch barreled rifles. I did want to get an SBR because we can shoot varmint with, with, with SBRs here in Indiana. And really, 300 Blackout is optimized for shorter barrels. This BCM has a 9.5 inch barrel. It's a very short, handy, light little package. With my Savvy Sniper Sling, you can see how it is, even with a suppressor, which is an Omega 9K from Silencer Co. A very small, handy little rifle. This rifle is going to go with me walking around the woods looking for some coyotes. Now, we've been out already this year kind of looking for them in several of the pieces of property we normally hunt. We've found quite a few coyotes roaming around out there. So. The 300 Blackout I will be using supersonic loads, so I do want to be able to reach out to 100 yards, maybe a little bit further, 150 yards. The subsonics uh, really aren't real well suited for shooting uh, you know, coyotes. I mean, I just don't think it has enough energy at that range. Within 50 yards, 75 yards, I would be using subsonics, but we're going to be looking at, at fields. Now, we will be baiting and calling the, the dogs in, so hopefully um, we'll get them within that 100 yard window, which I think we probably can do so comfortably. So we've been playing with it this afternoon, trying to get the thing sighted in. I just picked up what I had available at my local gun shop, Bly Sports in Valparaiso, Indiana. They had some Remington uh, Supersonics, and I have those right over here. Let me grab them here really quick. These are 120 grain, and you can see that they have a nice little hollow point on them. They're giving decent performance at 100 yards, but um, you know they're about 18 bucks a box. And because it's what's available, this is what I'll probably wind up using. Or I may hop on ammo seek and see what else I can find. But right now the gun's zeroed for that. Now, what's kind of nice about the 4x32 Trigicon, it's first of all LED powered, the, the sight that I have here on the rifle. That means I don't have uh, tritium in here, and I don't have a light gathering tube on the top that oftentimes blooms. It's oftentimes way too bright. And I like to have the option of turning my illuminator reticle off and the LED version of this site allows you to do that. You have a knob on the side of the site that allows you a number of different brightness settings. This one is also set up for 300 blackouts, so it has a bullet drop compensator in it, both for supersonic and subsonic loads. And again, I can adjust the brightness or just have no illumination whatsoever. Also, I've discovered that my Armasight clip-on night vision works perfectly in front of this, so if we do go into the evening hours shooting at coyotes, I will have the ability to have night vision. Uh, probably even throw a thermal on this at some point this fall, this winter, and play with it with the thermal as well. But I want to give the Trigicon a crack at it simply because we do plan on hunting, you know, like I said, in the morning or in the, uh, the afternoon before it gets completely dark outside. So that's what this video is about. Do a little bit of shooting with this rifle, get it sighted in, show you guys uh, how cool this little 300 Blackout is. This is my first 300 Blackout SBR. I'm pretty excited about it. I've been waiting for it to transfer in for some time. We ordered a while ago. And as I said, we got a few more in, in at Copper Custom. They're going for like $13.99. Um, but anyway, yeah, I'm really excited to do some coyote hunting with this bad boy. So let's go over, do a little bit more shooting with the gun, show you guys what it's all about. What we're shooting today is the 300 Blackout AAC from Remington. These are supersonic loads. It's a 120 grain bullet. Does have a uh, hollow point on it. All right. I'll just see if we got this thing zeroed at 100 yards. Looks like these rounds are wildly inaccurate and looks like it's a little bit low. So we'll have to bring up the adjustment here just a little bit. Let's see if we can't get that on target. Uh, 
All right. Load five more. So this little, let's see what the velocity is on these guys. Is two, four, six, eight, ten. Should have five in there. Here in a few minutes. Just want to get this thing pretty much zeroed as best I can. Looks like it's just a little bit too high. All right. Looks like it did a little bit better group. Just a scotch too high. That should have us pretty close to zero. With the Trichicon LED sight, not only do I have illuminated reticle, but I also have a bullet drop in the reticle for both supersonic and subsonic. So on one side of the reticle, it has a bullet drop for supersonic loads. On the other side, it has a bullet drop for subsonic loads. I'm not gonna use subsonic loads out of this nine and a half inch barrel on coyotes. It's not gonna be much of a cartridge, you know, past 100 yards. The coyotes we've been seeing around here are gonna be at least one to 200 yards out. We're gonna to try to, to call them and bait them in, get them in within 100 yards so we get nice clean shots on them. With this illuminated reticle in the LED version of this Trichicon, it's, uh, it's really nice because I can also put a clip-on night vision device in front of it in case it goes into the evening. But we're gonna to try to get the dogs either in the morning or in the evenings just before sunset. That's when they seem to be most active, at least uh, on the property that we've been to. So the Trigicon sh should do just fine for hunting. So anyway, it looks like we have it pretty much zero with the supersonic loads. We'll do a little bit more playing around with it here this afternoon and then uh, maybe move forward and check out how that BDC works with the subsonic loads. Just for fun, we're gonna try some Silent Co 208 grade subsonics at 100 yards using the BDC. Now, I already know from playing around at 50 yards that the point of aim and impact is different between the Remington loads, and, and the, uh, which are supersonic, and the subsonic loads. The supersonics were actually hitting when I had it zero to 50 yards with the subsonics. The supersonics were off their mark on the proper holdover by about an inch up and an inch left. So I think that's just a difference between the two, cal uh, the two loads, one from Silencer Co and one from Remington. Uh, we're just gonna see what happens though with the subsonics using the holdover now at 100 yards. Probably not gonna be right on, but I don't plan on using these subsonics for hunting anyway. And I've also found for whatever reason, subsonics at 100 yards aren't the most accurate. It's kind of weird. All right, see if I can find a target down there that's not already Shot up. I'll probably aim for the bottom center. If it's too low, we won't see it hit on paper, obviously. So if I look down the bottom left and right side of my reticle, it'll tell me subsonic holdovers are on the left and the supersonics are on the right. So for 150 is the first dot, 100 is the second dot. So let's try the second dot hold and see what that gets us. I think it went low. I'll try the 150 hold. The 150 hold seems to be pretty much spot on. I, I hit paper. And again, right on top of the last one. It's grouping. All right, so the BDC is a little off between the supersonic Remingtons and the subsonic silencer codes, but the 150 holdover is working at 100. The 100 hit low, I can see the bullet hit the dirt. We might even see the bullet trace in the video that we're recording with the loophole spotting scope. Uh, I have a camera mounted to it thanks to Optics Planet. Uh, the, the, the camera mounting kit is allowing me to film through that loophole spotting scope. So um, yeah, that seems pretty cool and surprisingly, the, uh, the Silencer Co. subsonics were more accurate than I've seen out of 16-inch barreled subsonics. So when I had my SIG MCX out here with the same ammo at 100 yards, accuracy was all over the place. 
out of this uh, BCM, it seems like the accuracy is actually pretty darn good. Although I wouldn't want to shoot at anything living at 100 yards with a subsonic 300 blackout. But anyway. I really love how quiet the suppressor is with some subs. Dude, not only is it quiet, man, you shot a group like that down there. Nice. <laughs> those little subs are doing pretty good. Those, uh, these are the, the those harvesters. Yep. Were you using the 150 reticle? Yeah, 150 reticle. I was landing them right on there. What do you think of that thing? Um, I'm gonna have to get one. Definitely gonna have to <laughs> get one. Right? I am falling, my first day at the range with this thing, guys, and I'm falling in love with this thing. This whole setup is just awesome. Those subs are really, really quiet. This is it, the tough part of working with the Military Arms Channel. <laughs> Just get to experience a little bit, and then I have to uh, give it away. It's like the constant permanent layaway <laughs> program, right? Yes, exactly. <laughs> All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and try some of the Subsonics using the 150 holdover. With the silencer codes, we're going to change up steel targets down there. Jason had pretty good luck with these. I have the stock out too far. Sam set it out. I'm used to AK stock links, and uh, Sam is used to AR stock links. Oh, yeah, I, I've become used to the stumpy stocks. Oh, I used the wrong hold, so we just have dots, and I accidentally used the 100 hold over. I saw it hit the dirt, and uh, not the 150. Make sure I don't do that in the field. Yeah, you had one shot go wild. Uh, and you'll see that on the little picture in picture of Tim's putting up on the target. Come over here and look at this real quick. So Tim got uh, got this loophole spotting scope from Optics Planet and actually got an adapter for the loophole spotting scope so we can put a camera on the spotting scope so you can see the target downrange. And it's pretty cool. We'll probably be able to see the bullet trace or actual bullet in flight with the sun over our shoulder like this. I didn't notice it in here, didn't but you guys it. might be able to see it on the larger screen. Yeah, we'll so. see what happens. Yeah. But, but uh, the second shot went errant, and you'll see it there, but the, the rest of them were all right there in the so middle have, of that So we have a cross here for supersonics that, that are dead hold at 100, and then uh, we have the, the little dots in the reticle, and there, there's a 150 dot, which is the third dot down. I accidentally hit, used the 100, and that's mm -hmm. what sent the bullet into the dirt underneath the target, and now it came back up to the 150. But I uh, hope I don't do that in the field. I get excited getting on a coyote, and I'm like, wrong dot. Although I won't be using subsonics. But anyway, cool stuff, man. Fun. This is a neat setup, too. Let's do a quick sound test to see how the Omega 9K performs with these Remington supersonics, which are 120 grainers, which we have zeroed, and the gun seems to be shooting really well with. Do it just like Silencer Shop does when they do their testing. Have the muzzle in line with the pickup, and here we go with the first round. 144.5. 144.5. All right, go ahead and reset real quick. Hmm. Try that one more time. That's exactly what I just did. I know. And, all right, here we go. 147.5. 147 at the muzzle. So at the muzzle, this thing is definitely not hearing safe. With the supersonics, that bolt close just. Bolt close was 112 decibels, by the way. 145.6. 145.6. So this little can with supersonics definitely outside of the hearing safe range at the muzzle. We'll test it at the ear here in a second because where, for I, where I'm standing, it doesn't sound that loud, but I could be all, all wet on that. So um, now we're gonna go ahead and fire some subsonics and see how quiet they are uh, while we have this all set up. All right, now we're gonna try the subsonics, the harvesters from Silencer Co. And we'll see what they sound like. How the Omega 9K. 134.9. 134.9. That's nice and quiet. Go ahead. There we go. 
130.1. I can definitely hear the sound difference. That sounded quieter. You burn some of the oxygen out of the can. 132.4. So with subsonics, this thing is really, really, really quiet. 132 decibels is really, really quiet. So now what we're going to do with the supersonics is we're going to bring the sound meter over here and we're going to try to put it fairly close to my ear and see if we can get a reading on the ejection port side of the gun because it doesn't sound as loud to me as the shooter as it does to people standing off to one side or the other of the gun or to the sound meter. Let's get that set up. All right, guys, this precarious setup is us trying to measure at my right ear on the ejection port side of the gun how loud the report is shooting the supersonic Remingtons. Go ahead and start a recording. Okay. One forty point four. One forty point four. Go ahead and reset. One forty two point seven. And that was a 136.2. That's weird. Okay, so it's hovering right at hearing safe at the shooter's ear. And that's on the ejection port side. And the AR-15 M16 vents gas from its bolt carrier group on this side. So this is definitely the loudest side. Um, yeah, so it, it is actually less loud at the shooter's right ear on the loudest side of the rifle, which is why to the shooter it seems more comfortable than it does to anybody standing off to the side. Yeah. So now we know. We thought, what the heck, we'll try the same test with the subsonic ammunition. So here we go. One thirty-seven point one. So it's louder. All right. Here we go. One twenty-nine point two. Interesting. There's that first round pop there. Mm-hmm. 130.8 so the first one was louder than at the muzzle but after we got through that first round pop it became quieter yeah so interesting that is interesting i don't know how to explain that guys but once again with at least two of the shots it was quieter at the shooter's ear than it was at the muzzle yeah interesting all right guys we're going to tie things up for this afternoon i hope you enjoyed coming out to the range and checking out my new coyote gun at least for the state of indiana if you guys have any questions, you can ask those questions down below. We try to stick around for the first couple of days after the video goes live to answer the questions you guys may have. Also, please swing by and check out Copper Custom. If you would like to support the Military Arms Channel, that's the best possible way. Also, check out Fold30.com. That's Fold30.com. We've taken all the web's best firearms content creators and brought them under one roof, and that is Fold30.com. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll talk to you guys soon.